guys, welcome to the Bonus Podcast. I'm the host Donato Surbonas, and uh, finally, in our new studio in Vilnius, we have our regular lineup with Augusto Shulauskas and Rita Svishnauskas. Hello, guys. Nice to see you here in the new studio. Back after holidays, feeling good, feeling nice. It's, it, uh, it's quite a cozy studio, I would have to say. The only thing better than our studio after this break is usually action returning oh you know, yeah it was a pleasure to watch those big crowds big games a lot of talent on the court and uh, although we have a q a episode uh, this time which will be exclusively available for beyond plus members only we will for sure talk a little bit uh, uh, about partisan uh, win against fs and also partner cause getting a huge win against real madrid by the way shout out to beyond plus members we have eight 129 BN Plus members already and uh, big credit goes to our All-Star and GM subscribers Nikola Belic, Dave Gassman, Yunut Georgescu, Kimon and also All-Stars Eveldas OAB Emeritus, Gabriel Serva, Nikozinho, Laimonas Ignas, Tivol T21, Stefan Staminic, Koki, Baltvarne, Kostas B, Victory, Euroleague Fantasy Talks, Igor, Nick BG, uh, Goldflake and Tesseract. So, it's a big group of BM Plus members. Thank you all for supporting us and BM Plus members. Just a reminder that BM Plus members are getting not only those uh, these B, uh, or bonus Q and A episodes, but also a lot of extra content, including uh, Augusta's uh, breakdowns. For instance, he just posted uh, Alec Peters' breakdown this morning. Uh, you also get exclusive inter- interviews, opinion articles, uh, some behind the scenes stuff happening in transfer markets, and a lot of uh, other extra features that are available only for BN Plus members. So join us on basketnews.com slash plus. Uh, so yeah, we will go back to the questions a little bit later, but let's talk about two big games that we had uh, yesterday. The first one was a very high scoring game in Belgrade. I mean, I can barely remember a quarter where both teams scored over 30 points. It was 36 to 31, I think, uh, by Partizan. And this last sequence was just spectacular for 10 consecutive possessions. Partizan was scoring. They were like eight from eight from the field, six from six from the free throw line. And like for five minutes, uh, FS couldn't do nothing. In that short span, Avramovic scored 12 points. Of course, he was a start of the game with career high 30 points. Uh, Partizan went from up by one to up by eight and won this game. What was the most spectacular for you guys from that night? Uh, you said how many times there was a quarter where both teams scored 30 plus. I don't know. Before the game, I was looking at this and uh, I just knew this was going to be a scoring fest because you look at the stats, you look at how both of the, those teams play. Their first head to head game finished 194 to FS. So yeah. you could have seen it coming. So it's like the replay of, of the first round game and Partizan by the advanced stats have the best offense in the league, FS have the third best offense. And defensively, FS have the worst defense and Partizan have the third worst defense. So it was like, you knew this was going to be about who gets more stops in the end because there are not going to be a lot of stops. And there was one funny moment that stood out to me. Um, uh, Eight minutes remaining in the fourth quarter, there was a Zach Lede dunk. The cameraman, the producers showed the replay uh, they cut back to the view, and there is another dunk. Tyreek Jones is yeah. already on the rim. So they show a replay again because we did not see what, what just happened. And after the replay, and, and, and Usage already has the ball and is shooting a three-pointer. So, like, there were three scores in 21 seconds, and the spectator ba- barely see, saw what happened because it just happened so quick. As I said, uh, three baskets in 21 seconds. And even the cameraman was, you know... Probably should have taken an example from the NBA where the uh, replays right now are a bit more rare because the game is has become just so fast. And it was just, uh, yeah, perfect proof of why this game was so offensive orientated. And then, you know, the Alexa show, we have to give uh, compliments to that guy. Um, and actually, one weird uh, thing about what stood out from Alexa was that uh, he was guarded by Will Clyburn Mm-hmm. In the w- when he entered the court, and I was like, mm-hmm. "Why is that a good uh, choice?" I mean, Alexis is usually playing pick and rolls, and 
first possession, he basically gets going because Will just tries to pressure him, pressure him full court. And From Alexi, the side, leaving his left hand. Yeah, like standing okay. like this on the side, just go to the basket. And, yeah. and he just uses his speed, makes the layup, gets the first basket, feels the rhythm. And it continued in the second quarter. Like he was, go he was trying to navigate uh, through the, through the screens, trying to go under. Alexa made a free, and I was like, "Darius Thompson is guarding Uros Tri uh, Trifunovic. Uh, why is Will Clyburn guarding Alexa Vraumovic?" And I was like, for the first position, I was like, maybe that was not on purpose. But when it happened for five minutes, I was like, okay, this was a weird choice. Mm. I don't know what you thought, thought I, about uh, his performance. I just thought like uh, FS probably didn't put much emphasis on Alexa. Like they treated him uh, the way uh, the numbers are showing that he's a 27.5% three-point shooter. Mm. So they were undering him. Uh, they were forcing him to, daring him to shoot uh, from, from deep range, uh, even mid-range shots. They were giving away those. Of course, I, I can say that they let him drive to his left too easy. So, so when... When a player steps on the court and he gets an easy layup in the very first possession, it gets him going, you know. And knowing the mentality of Alexa Vramovic, I cannot say I'm surprised that he had a 30-point game. Uh, sometimes he just explodes. Like the first game of the season, 24 points versus Maccabi. Uh, we know what he did for the national team. He just has that in him. And in the fourth quarter, when he was shooting those step back frees uh, guarded by Will Clyburn, I, I just thought like uh, a radioactive Keith Langford bit him, and and, <laughs> and he got his his talents. Uh, That's or, a nice or, comparison. Or, or Tyrese Rice. So you know, uh, when the player feels hot and he has the support from the crowd and support from his teammates and his coach, he feels like he's the best player in the world at that moment. I mean, even when you play pickup basketball, at times. When you start hitting shots, you feel like the rim is is like an ocean. Mm. I think that's how Alexa felt yesterday. So in the fourth quarter, his his plays were huge because uh, Partizan tried to run away in the third quarter. They built an 11-point lead, but FS got back. And actually, in fourth quarter, uh, FS took the lead by one point. So there were 10 lead changes in the whole game. With six minutes left to play, it's a one-point or two-point game, and nobody knows what's going to happen. From that point, Partizan took over the game with their energy, with with uh, Avramovic, with Lide being crazy on the court. I mean, his free dunks and all the plays that 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 he he had, they are so impressive when you know that he played 40 minutes. He didn't rest for the whole game, and it didn't really seem to affect him at all because in the post-game interview, he said, I'm fine, I'm good. <laughs> so, you know. Uh, he definitely has uh, something in that backpack, you know, that allows yeah. him to fly that much. <laughs> Maybe he brought something from Azerbaijan. You know? <laughs> Magical beans or something. Uh, but it's just that, again, Obradovic, uh, we're getting used to it. Like in the second uh, half, he narrows his rotation to usually like seven players. So this time, PJ Dozier didn't really get going so in the second half he barely even played mm -hmm. they were without james nunnally but they they had huge impact from uh, danilo Jusic. he hit three free pointers in the end of the third quarter and in the beginning of fourth from pin downs and, and various actions so those shots were also huge so it just shows like uh when there's one man down there is somebody else prepared to step up um, big win for, for, for Partizan, of course. At the same time, they beat FS by more than six, so they have the head to head advantage. I'm not sure if it's going to matter Don't right worry. now, yeah, because they're separated by two wins. But it, it was just a high quality basketball game. And I, I want to quote uh, Tomislav Miatovic, FS coach, in, in his pregame interview. He said, Finally, I will, our beloved EuroLeague is back. So, like, after this uh, nonsense FIBA window, to see this basketball game w was, like, a relief for me. Like, I, I felt happy again. And shout out to both teams, because both teams are extremely talented, as you said. Uh, defensively, maybe they have some issues, but offensively, they're super strong with a lot of quality. And we saw big shots from Kevin Punter. Okay, maybe Shane couldn't score as much as you want him to, uh, in, especially in the second half. But Will Clyburn actually had a good game offensively. Uh, and for Partizan, you just see how it is uh, when, when they get the rebounds. When they get the defensive rebounds, uh, they can run. They can push the tempo. That's what they want to do. And in this game, 
FS didn't really hurt them too much on, on the offensive boards. So this allowed the partisan to to mm. push the tempo and have a lot of fast break points. You had some clips. I had one clip. Abramovich had stress. So, By the way, yeah. if you could compare the uh, shot difficulty in the first half by Alexa and the second half, it was a huge difference. Yeah. So I, I kind of blame both Will Clyburn and FS for you know making <laughs> these first easy baskets for Alexa, like an easy walk in the park in Kamalagdan. You know, but the, in the second half, it was all about Alexa being hot and making those crazy shots, very difficult shots. Yeah, so before we show that clip, it was just, you mentioned, you know, uh, it was obvious. Alexa and Partizan wanted Will Clyburn to defend him in the end because in the second half, he was not guarding Alexa. So they, in the fourth quarter, usually no teams will switch. So you go target hunting mm. and, you know, okay, we we ask Will Clyburn to defend. And Odemus, you can if you can play that clip. Uh, stop it right here. They they get. Can you go a little bit back? Go a little bit back. And after the switch, watch Alexa walk back to the half court like Kevin Punter does after a switch. He's like, oh yeah, I got Will Clyburn. I have confidence now, like LeBron James, you know, <laughs> like this. Chill, you know. Now I'm gonna show who's the boss here. Now I'm going. Now I'm going to show who who can uh, who can score in the last moments. And I was like. When I saw this, I, I, I thought, is this Kevin Punter? Is this like, he feels like LeBron James out there on the court. Look at, look at how he just sees Clyburn defending him. Oh, yeah, I'm going to walk back to the half-court line. I'm going to show you who the boss is. Yeah, like, Kevin, please make some space for me, okay? Yeah, and I was wondering, Kevin Punter, KP is on the sideline, and he's watching. I'm wondering, what is KP thinking, you know, in, in, this, posi in, in this position? Because he's usually the one doing that. Mm. And I just thought... I would have been mad if I was Clyburn seeing this. You know, you see a you see a switch, and then it's like a guy just walking with the, with his back to the basket to the half court line because he thinks he's so good and he can beat me so easily. But the shot was difficult. The shot Contested was tested by Elijah Bryant. The shot was amazing, and it reminded me a little bit of you know Jalen Brunson, where he mm. just goes inside the paint, That's stops true. on two legs, and then he just with his pivot foot. That was amazing, but. As I just wanted to, you know, notice this Alexa confidence mm. and uh, the difficulty of this shot. And I was like, yeah, this was an amazing performance. Career yeah. high for him in the EuroLeague, I think. Yeah. Career high, yeah, for sure. And, uh, and we're talking about KP as one of the best and most clutch EuroLeague players. One of the was, best one-on-one -on -one players. And actually, on the KP had a good game. Yeah, but Alexa was just too hot. Uh, if, you, if we're talking about Partizan's offense, so it was KP, Lee, Lee Day, uh, Alexa, and Anjushic carrying the load mm. they were scoring there's I, the reason why we have his jersey over there so oh, for sure man. <laughs> ah, he is a good shooter it's just that he needs to be patient to wait for his moment to come because uh partisan have a really strong roster and when everyone's healthy sometimes he doesn't get too many minutes i have to say that also mateusz ponitka who hasn't been playing a lot this season did a really good job defensively and and he played almost 25 minutes uh, in the first quarter, Elijah Bryan got two offensive fouls because of Ponitka, and and uh, Elijah Bryan spent the whole game being in foul trouble. So uh, again, another player stepping up. Although there were some players maybe that didn't perform to the level you expect, like Kaboklo defensively wasn't really good. Uh, Obradovic tried Smilagic in the third quarter. Smilagic was questionable before the game, and he probably from those two minutes you could see that he wasn't 100% ready. So. Coach decided to go with Kaminsky again. Um, but yeah, it's a, it's a huge team win. I say it's a bounce back win because before the break, um, Partizan lost at home to Bayern Munich with that Sylvain Francisco yeah. dagger. And those type of losses can really affect you uh, because you're trying to change, chase the, the play-in, trying to get to the playoffs, and then all of a sudden you have this heartbreak loss at home. So maybe the break was good for them to forget about it. To focus on some other things like Alexa played for Serbia as well. Um, some players had time to rest, and now they were back on the court. I, I'd say the 10 point difference doesn't really reflect the game because it was a really close game for, for 35 36 minutes. Um, FS was hanging in there all the time. Tibor Plies was hitting his um, uh, son, give me the ball, I will show you how to shoot type of shots. <laughs> Uh, you know, from from mid range, and 
yeah, I, I enjoyed it a lot. Let let's not forget that they've lost the cup during this yeah, break, yeah. and it, it I think that was the most painful. And yeah, Partizan was in a bad stretch uh, before this uh, FIBA window break, and there was even a question coming from the Beyond Plus member uh, connected to let's say Jelko's mood, Jelko's feelings about the situation because when they lost the cup, uh, he said something like, uh, "I have to see uh, what." I'm going to do, I reached my limits, uh, like from the coaching standpoint, making an impact for his team uh, as a head coach, you know, to, to make his team become winning team, make his team better. He was really disappointed. And uh, there were questions whether, whether since Jelko is an expiring contract, that were there questions, was it like a hint of potential, you know, leaving Partizan? Because, I mean, for sure, he, he will be one of the hottest free agent head coaches. Um, of course, after this win, he explained that whether he's coaching Partizan or he's not coaching any other team. So let's make it clear that if he's leaving Partizan, he's basically retiring or he just calmed down. Maybe those wins also will boost his mood as well. So it's very likely that he will continue. But based before this game, we uh, received one question from concerned BN Plus member Archie. And he was already thinking about the future. What if? What if happens for Partizan if Jelko Bradovic is leaving? So who could replace Jelko Bradovic if he leaves Partizan? I don't think it happens soon. And I think if Jelko leaves, that's on his terms. It's not like somebody is going to fire him. I haven't seen the respect level for a coach that Jelko has in Belgrade. Uh, there is a standing ovation of 20,000 people every time he enters the court before the game. I think uh, the board uh, also understands that. That's out of question. That's out, out of, of question. Discussion, so, actually. So, yeah, so I'm, I don't think this is going to happen soon. I think this is in a, you know, five years maybe. But let's say Jelko is pissed, you know, things are going wrong. They're not making the playoffs. They're losing the Adriatic League. And Jelko is like, mm -hmm. okay, I'm done. I cannot After do anything anymore. this season? Yeah, yeah. Because That's the question. What if he leaves? And uh, centers, I have Sabonis, Porzingis, and actually Grazulis. Where's where's JV? Where's JV? What are you I'm not about? sure if I need JV. <laughs> I have Sabonis and <laughs> <What>? Porzingis. <laughs> Grazulis over JV? What man? We have That's Sabonis a wild and national team. It's a for wild switching thing. reasons. Come on, for switching reasons. Uh, are we gonna talk about Ergenataman driving that? F1 <laughs> car. That was an amazing. Course. Definitely driving into the pole position. That was the Prima highlight Abdul of the Bark, right? Or Prima Abdul Jabbar. Rajan <laughs> dog, dog. dog Rivers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for watching the short part of our Urbonus Q&A podcast. If you want to find a full episode, please subscribe to BM Plus.